Marley, look. Ah, see what you can do with that? Then go this way. See, you make all the, now wait, don't, don't, don't spoil it. Wait a minute. We'll fill it up with this. This is April 28, 2005. We've got Baba O here from Lima. Yes, Spending a week with us. It's been raining all week. That's and we just got back from breakfast. Wonderful what did you what did you girls have for breakfast? Pancakes. Pancakes. And what else, Ralph? Hot chocolate. <clears throat> Apple juice. Juicy. Apple juice for her and her. Yeah. What are you guys playing? Play-Doh! Play-Doh Play is yucky. This is Play-Doh. You don't eat it! It's not yucky, is it? What we can you like Play-Doh, Marley? Like this, go like this. Where's that a ball? Yeah, and then flatten it out. Then you take this and flatten it out. Now wait a minute, now wait. There it is. What is that? See? Well look, <laughs> it's this. Sure. Can I try Isn't that? that pretty? Okay. Make a ball first, and then make your mark with whatever you want. But it has to be small, either this or this. I need this. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay, now what do you want to make with this? What kind of a... What about five that? Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it came up on this side. <laughs> it came up over here. Isn't that funny? Oh, look at that. <laughs> it belongs in this. Okay, now let's put it back. There, Mar Marley. This is yours. Do you have any more play dough? Let's make some more. Here's some more. Let's, right let's, here. Okay, let's make some more balls. And you can make all kinds of. I need a little big one. Put it all on. Okay, so this is a yeah, ball. Let me have a little bit of this. I'll make another ball. We'll make other designs. You want this? Okay. Are we going to play outside today? No. Why? Say rain, rain. Rain, rain. Go away. Go away. Come again. Some other day. Some other day. There you got it. Who used the umbrellas today? Me. Rain, rain. Go away. Come I again another no day. Look at my box. Uh -huh. What color is yours, Ralph? Yeah, that's pretty. What now is that? What do you want? Red. What, do you want Red. Now? what color is Baba's? Blue. Blue. And Marley likes purple. My <laughs> This is gonna be this is gonna be pretty well. <laughs> You know what that looks like a hat. That likes a woman's hat. Yeah. Look at that. You can. Evelyn. Go ahead, Ralph. Say Evelyn. Evelyn. Say the whole thing for him and then. Evelyn, Devilem, Dilo Koza Komalama, Changile, Miskil, Taze, Stuze, Evelyn, Zuze. Look, look, look. Evelyn, Devilem, Dilo Koza Komalama, Changile, Miskil, Taze, Stuze. 
Arta, parta, čužda, mišta, križda. Your mother, your grandmother knows. What's the one else? Prela baba, tri baba. Kaci baba. Kaci baba. Kaci baba, kaci dedo. Prela baba, tri vrtenca. Sigi klašla na polica. Otide mace, moji moća. Otide sluče, moji skrizi. Let's share, let's share. What else do we know then? How about counting? Can you say, now listen, listen, listen to me. Say it like I do, okay? Edno, edno, dve, dve. Three. No, just say it. I'll do it. Three. 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 She doesn't want to do it. Uh-uh. No. Can you do it? They're playing play Uh-uh. No. How they about any that other that ones? Any songs? Any other? <laughs> Tell them what you did when you were a little girl their age. Baba, where you were living. I know a Greek song. Okay. <laughs> it's, um, and then I'll explain to you what it says. Yeah. This is a, uh, this is, these people were in a boat and a great big storm came along and they started praying and they said, please, God help us. All the can, all the uh, oils, uh, can, oil for the canvas, yeah, oils, they use oil, the, all, the, all the oil in the canisters, we're going to make them gold for you so that we can get out of this storm. It was a black storm. Now you remember that. <laughs> I don't know what else I know. <laughs> Just tell them what you did when you were a little girl their age growing up. What you did in the old country. Well, I used to... Who you lived with and... I had girlfriends. I was, I was in school. Went to school every day. And, uh, oh, uh, and one of the... We, there's about 36 of them. One of the... Uh -huh, one of the students came to America, like I did, and his father brought them over, and he became one of the best surgeons in the city of Milwaukee. Wow. Yeah. Well, we came to Marion. But in the old, in the old country, what did you play with? What? I used to go to my grandmother's house, and my mother would say, please go, because my mother, my grandmother was a widow. She lived in her own house by herself. And my mother would say, please, go stay with your grandmother tonight, because she's all by herself. And I'd say, oh, no, mother, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. I want to stay with you. But then anyway, finally, she would make me go, and I would stay with my grandmother. And what my was her name? What was her name? below the schoolhouse. And she raised chickens, and a lot of chickens. We were down here in the south of the Vichini, and she was in the north right under the school. 
And as soon as she would come from my house, those chickens would come down to meet her. Yeah. And the school chickens. Right. They lot of chickens. And the school teachers used to tell me, "Go from your grandmother. Get the eggs." I can't get this off. <laughs> I ate. So they bought eggs for my grandmother, but I had to go and get them for her. This was a beautiful, beautiful school teacher. She was a, a young lady. She was very nice. And then when we had, when we gave um, the speeches and everything, we had no papers in front of us to read. We had to say it all by heart. And all the village people would be sitting there, and they had no education at all. And they would say, oh, this is wonderful. How do they do this? How do they do this? We don't know. My grandmother was there, my mother, my aunt, my uncle. But they okay, didn't yes, understand the how we did it because they did not go to school. My mother, in her generation, they did, didn't have school for girls. And then I was the first generation to go to school, which was Greek. It was not Macedonian. We were, we were Macedonians, but we were in a Greek country. Because when the war came along between the <laughs> Greece, you like and Greece, Greece won the war, and we were there, and that's why. There were many Play Turks that stayed behind, and they loved the people in Vichyne. And when it, then the time came, they wanted them to go to Asia, to go back. They didn't want to go back. They liked to who they were. And when they did start going, most of them, most of them died on the way because they didn't want to go. In the village, we had about 200 houses when we were there. Now, I don't think there's anything left. There's anything left. I asked one of my friends in Fort Wayne, and I said, I would like to go back. This is quite well back. Oh, she says, oh, but you don't want to go back. She said, it's terrible. I've been there. All there are is stones, stones, stones. She said, there's no houses or anything. So I never wanted to go back. Yeah, and this was, and I'm so happy that my father and my grandfather had the insight to make my, uh, to get my dad to come to this country, which is beautiful. <laughs> and when we came, my father, well, that's it. Well, okay. first, what, what, it, what, it, you lived in the valley? And yeah, we lived in the valley. It was a beautiful village. All around the valley, there were little mountains. But my, my grandmother had fields of, of wheat, of corn, and she tended to them all the time. And she dug the ditches, and I would go along with her. And every time they'd have a garden or something, or in the field, they would make me just go out, to turn the row out just like they did. Yeah. So I enjoyed that. I, I liked it because I liked to work. I would like to be with my mother and my grandmother, too. Who was Drakla Panaya? Oh, Drakla Panaya. That was something that when somebody passed some gas, that's what they and called it. Me and me and me. But I don't know if Drakla Panaya was existing <laughs> or not. I don't know. I don't know. And what about Esti? Esti Oh, Esti. Okay, Esti is a story about a woman who had a child out of luck. Esti on the picture. She had a child out of good luck. And they put him on a horse. They put her on the horse. And the people from the village go right along with her. And they just hate her because she did that. And they would go round and round and round. And she'd say, my Esti, you passed me through this one time. Why do you go again? That was the story of Esti. That's okay. How about the fellow that didn't have any beard? Huh? Kiyosato. Kiyosato. Oh, Kiyosato. Oh, yeah. Kiyosato was a man in the village who did not have any hair. He couldn't grow a beard. And so they called him Kiyosato because he could not grow any beard. That's the, what else is that? How about the one who had the babies in the field? Oh, 
Oh, that was my mother-in-law's relative. She was while well, she was working in the field. She was pregnant and she doesn't know what happened. And she had those babies for well, first one and then two and then three and then four. She said five, six, seven little ones. And they are they were all gone. They never they didn't because they were little bitty things. And what else do you want to know? How about when you made pita? Oh, when we made pita. My mother made it. I didn't because I was only Oh, two years old. And your grandmother, she made it. Oh, my grandmother made pita from pumpkin, from nuts, from uh, onions, from spinach, from leeks, from anything, anything she could make it. And then when we were when I was in school, she'd say, "Oh, Jeff, stay here with me. Baba will give you some pita," and she would. So pita, and I would have it, and I'd go home to my mother, to my house. Yeah, and those chickens, when it, when she had those chickens, every one of them knew her. Every one chicken. As soon as she'd come, they'd come around her and just cluck, 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 cluck all around. Her neighbors were wonderful. People would cross the road, and then next to her, and my aunt, Tete Calopa, she lived below Baba on the same street light. And the street was like this from the school on down here to our house almost. And when the water came, the water came right in the center, like the river. Yeah. And then did you have soldiers stay in your house at one point? Oh yeah. Okay, the soldiers came when my father left the country. And because he told my mother, he said, I went to America, I know what it's like, I'm gonna go back. She says, no, please stay. So he only stayed six weeks and he took off and by hook or crook, he, he, he walked and then he filed, found a ride and somehow or other, she, he got clear to the boat. And when he got to the boat, he didn't know how he was going to go because he didn't have a passport. passport. He didn't have a passport. So there was a Armenian man next to him. He said, you know, I want to go to America. But he said, I have no passport. And this man, he said, well, I have a passport. He said, I'll, I'll, I will sell it to you or give it to you. He said, I don't care. So for a few pennies or whatever, he bought it from this man. His name is, was Agop Simeon. And then my dad got on the boat, went to Bulgaria. In Bulgaria, they put him in jail. They put him in jail because he didn't come in just right. They knew he was not supposed to be in the country. They put him in jail and then after he did get out of jail, he got on the boat and came to America and stayed ever since. He was home six weeks. My mother was pregnant and nine, nine months later I was born. And I knew then I, after a while I knew I had a brother. We had a lot of good times together, a lot of bad times. We used to fight because he was a boy and I was a girl, I think. He used to beat me up. And so did mother. She smacked me all the time because I was bad, probably. I don't know. But I had good girlfriends in school. I used to go to school with them. Oh, we had a lot of fun. And then in the evenings, all the young girls that wanted, about say, 17, 18 years old, who wanted to have a friend, a boyfriend to get married, to get married, they would get together and they would laugh and they would sing and they. They were very happy, and every holiday there was a dance and, 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 and drinks and food. And, and then in the meantime, I'll tell you, Baba Roja, she used to go to these weddings, and she would stay there all week because people all week were bringing, for the wedding, were bringing a gift. And the, and the family who had the, the, the wedding, could not make any food for them. So 
they would have Baba come and she would do many, many, many of them. And she would come and she would make great big kettles full of, of food and they would eat and have, have a nice time all week long. And then when the wedding was over, Baba would come home. All they would give her was one slip. And my mother didn't like that. She'd say, why do you go? You work hard and all you get is nothing. But Baba said, I enjoy it. I'm going to do it. I don't care what you say. And she kept this up all the time. Yeah. Which one of the, your grandfather was the priest or what was? My grandfather was, well see this is why my mother stayed. We stayed as long as we did there. I, it would have been, oh, maybe four or five years earlier. But my grandfather was a priest and he was married and had five, four children, three boys and a girl. And uh, my uncle, my dad came to America. My second uncle went to, yeah, he came to America to Uncle George, went to, to Toledo, Ohio. And my uncle Milos, he went to Sofia, he went to Bulgaria. And my father put him through college, sent him money all the time, got him through. And he became in Sofia, he became a superintendent or principal or whatever in one of the schools. And he was a very good man. When we came through to come to America, we stayed with him for, um, Oh, about two weeks. But in the meantime, before that, my uncle got hurt and he had a straight uh, knee. He couldn't bend his knee. But while we were there, I remember he wasn't feeling well. And so all of his students came into my aunt's house. They sat around and talked to him. And before they, when they start going home, they shook hands with him and they went out. It was beautiful. He loved them all and they loved him. Did you ever go with your mother to Costoria? Did you walk over there or did she just go by herself? She went by herself. She never took me. No, because it was too far. Three hours. Three hours walk and I, <clears throat> we didn't have a horse. We didn't have to have a horse in order to But I thought you had a mule. We had a, we had a donkey. donkey. We had a donkey and my brother used to knock the heck out of it because the butt donkey wouldn't move and he would hit and hit. But anyway, that was the end of the donkey. And you had some dogs. Oh yeah, Pee Pee and Pee Pee and Juffy. Juffy and Finga. Yeah. Well, those are my dad's dogs. I don't yeah. know much about those. Those came before I did. That's all I know about the dogs, but my dad was the one that how about the sticks you played with? Well, we didn't have any toys. And so we go out in the yard, a bunch of kids, we take sticks and we would make things in the mud. That we sounds didn't have dough, like play dough and stuff like that. What do you remember about your trip to the United States? Oh, I remember. We came to, from Vishni, we went to Castoria. We stayed with a night, uh, a, 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 a relative night, relative aunt one night, or two nights, I think, and then the next day, that was my first time in an automobile. The automobile took us to Salonika. From Salonika, we went to Athens. And there was a beautiful wedding there. Oh, we, we couldn't imagine because the weddings where we were were not rich like that. It was a beautiful wedding. We attended that. They didn't care. We just walked around. We were not invited, but we were there. And then from there, we went to, that was Greece. And then we went to Bulgaria. We went to Bulgaria. I don't know, I'm going to Bulgaria on the train. Uh, there was a man traveling with us, and he asked my mother, he said, um, he called her, what do you call her? Bulke. That's a bride or lady or something. Bulke, he 
He says, do you care if I give you my daughter's earrings and put them on your daughter to, to pass them through the through the line, the custom line, yeah. So he wouldn't do anything. He says, well, they'll think it's hers. They're not going to charge me anything. So they put the earrings on me. I got them through. And then when we got over to the Bulgaria the territory, they, I, I took them off and gave them back to him. And then went up to my uncle and this aunt that had a house and everything. Because my uncle didn't have a house. He had an apartment and my brother was staying with him. My brother was there three years before so that he would not go to be a soldier in the Greek army like that. <coughs> and then from there we came. From Sofia we came to, I think, France. We stayed there two, three days, I think. And I remember the man, the man was a Macedonian and he had a hotel. We stopped in his hotel. He was married to a French wife, a French girl. And so she stood there with us while Mother was talking because knowing the same language. She held a pigeon in the back of her and then pretty soon Mother says, well, what is she doing that for? Well, he says, she's killing it. He says, we're going to have it for dinner. So that's what happened. <laughs> and then, from there, we went to Cherbourg. Austria, we went through Austria. And Paris, we went through Paris, Austria. Paris was beautiful. I still remember the big white streets, and they were all um, karamidi. They were karamidi, like we have outside. Karamidi, what are they called? I don't know. We made a step. What do you have outside where? Bricks. Oh, bricks. The, the streets were all made out of bricks. They were beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And there we met a girl who was a daughter to the man who was from Macedonia, from Vichini. He was sending people, he was an agent, sending people to anywhere in the world they wanted to go. She was there studying. And she had hair as long as down to her ankles. And we saw her and she told us about her hair. She said, I went, I don't know how many times to the hairdresser. She said, but she said, they have to have permission from my parents in order to cut my hair. She wanted to cut so bad, but it was way down and she never got to cut, I don't think. And then, that was in Paris. And then Austria, I remember the train, everything. Then we came to Cherbourg, the big boat, beautiful, great boat. The Hamarik it was called. And inside it was a, just like a palace. It was gorgeous. Gorgeous thing. A lot of uh, expensive things in it. And every day they they fed us and everything. Mother was always sick because she was you know, in the water she seasick. Couldn't take it. Seasick, yeah, she was seasick. And she stayed in the cabin mostly, but there was a nurse taking care of her. And my brother and I, we played upstairs and had a lot of fun. And then, it took seven days like that. We enjoyed it. We'd get up there and swing and play shuffleboard. We didn't know how to play anyway. So, after seven days, we landed in New York. You want me to go ahead? And sure. Okay. We landed in New York and there was a man there standing there after we got there. We didn't go through Ellis Island or anything. We didn't go through that. They put us from the boat to a big little boat to take us straight because we were first class. They don't, they don't uh, go through for disease or anything. And so there was a man there and he was looking for us. And he said, he came up close to us. He was from the Red Cross. He says, are you Elena Spiro Roca? Mother said, yeah. Like this, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And she said, yeah. And so he said, okay. He said, you come with me. 
couldn't, we didn't understand what he was saying. My mother said, my kids are hungry. He comes to look at me. He couldn't understand. So he said, like this. And so finally he got us some sandwiches. And uh, we ate, and then we were fine. He put us on the train right away. He put us on the train, and uh, the train was supposed to go to Youngstown, Ohio. And there we changed trains, I think. And there was a Red Cross person waiting there for us. <coughs> and uh, she says, are you so-and-so? So my mother said, yes. And so she said, okay, you go on this train. She said, you go to Marion, Ohio. So on the train, I think about three hours or so, we were in Marion. Mother, she, dad, and two relatives waiting for us. Mother says, there's your father. There's your father. I didn't know who he was. And my brother said, oh yeah, I know, I know, because he had seen him before. I had never seen him for 10 years. I was 10 years old. And uh, so we got out of the train, we got off the train, got in dad's car, and the relatives had a car, they came with him. He took us right to the house on 347 Pearl Street. Nice street, very nice street. He had everything fixed for us. The house was all furnished in, in the good uh, furniture, beds, everything. Tables, chairs, everything from shoppers. It was uh, one of the best uh, furniture places in there because he was making money with other two other people. He had a boy, he was making money with the food. And then when we got out of the car, I thought, my God, well, what is wrong here? I could not imagine why there was a sidewalk. I was impressed. I was impressed with the sidewalk. <coughs> and then we got in the house and kind of got acquainted. And after a few days, I said to Mother, why does he come home? I said, why doesn't he stay there? I don't know him. I don't care for him. Mother said, well, that's your father. I said, I know, but I don't know him. And, uh, well, then we started, you know, living there. And, and he was making shoes. Yeah, he was repairing shoes. Repairing shoes. And then after that, they started uh, buying shoes to sell. Uh -huh. And then, here, well, then my brother got married. Uh, when he was, I think, about 20 and some years old. He was in love with an American girl, but somebody said something and then she didn't want him or something, and then they found this, I don't know what to say, in Fort Wayne, the worst to he could have done. But anyway, he wanted to get married, he married her, and after, after they got married, it was okay. But she thought my family was rich, 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 because they, she had to give him for nothing. And uh, so they lived in the house. They made a plan to live together all the time. Mother said, I can't talk English, I can't do this, I can't do that. We're going to stay with us. So they stayed for 25 years. And, and then finally, well, I was married in between time anyway, because there was a I was 24 years old. There was a friend in, in Mansfield, Ohio, who talked to my father-in-law. He said, they want your daughter for Sarah. And because we were Macedonian people. And so, mother said, it's okay with me. Dad said, no. Well, why not? Because I knew Sarah, because we used to get together to Macedonian doings, youth doings, and he was always the president. Very bright, very, very good. And uh, I, and then Dad says, well, no, I don't want I said, well, I do. He said, well, why? I said, I know him. I, 
I love him. I, you know, it's okay with me. And mother says, well, if this is what she wants, he can dance as well. And the reason I don't want it is because he's got gray hair. I said, but he's got gray hair. He's only 28 years old. He's very nice to me. And then, and then it was okay. And then he started coming to the house. And one night, he, we always took dad's car because he didn't have a car. My dad had a big Packard and he drove the Packard in front of the shop. It was in front of the shop and he wanted me to go to Yassar, Ohio. And uh, I said, well, I can't go. He said, what do you mean you can't go? He said, I'll be with you. I said, I know, but I said, I have never dated. They are old country, you know, decisions. I said, I can't go. I said, the only way I can go is if I were engaged to you. He said, we are engaged now. And that was it. <laughs> And then he said, okay, we'll go to Bussaras and tell my parents. So he went to Bussaras, told his parents, and his mother was very happy. And he says, well, what shall we give her or something, you know. So he had a swimming medal this big, I still have a swimming medal from a championship. They gave me that. And from then, six months later, we got married. That was in August we got married. No. That's good. We'll do some more later on, maybe tonight. Those are interesting stories. Okay, this is uh, Saturday morning, April 30th, the last day of April. Bob is finishing up her week's vacation here in New Hampshire. She spent a lot of time with the little girls, but today we've got some peace and quiet. And uh, since she's got all of our dishes done and all the cleaning, now she's going to tell us more about where she grew up and about her grandfather and her, his family and more things about the old country and then about the different things they did after they moved here. I hope I don't have to blow my nose. Well, if you have to blow your nose, you can blow your, <laughs> you can blow your nose. So. so tell us about your grandfather or his family. Okay, my grandfather. His family was uh, um, next on the family, of course. Um, I don't know where his, um, when his mother came from Blaza. And, uh, no, his wife came from Blaza. But he was, uh, in his family, he had five brothers. And then they all lived together. And then when, after the boys grew up and started getting older and they had something to do, they couldn't live together. Where, where were they living at that time? They lived in the Vishini. In Vishini. In Vishini. And uh, so they separated and my father became a minister. And, uh, but I think before that, while well, he was a young man, he married my Baba. I, I think her name was Elena from the uh, village of Blaza. And uh, they kind of fell in love out working out in the fields. And so they say that um, that he carried a handkerchief from her, uh, a red handkerchief in his, uh, in his uh, bosom, in the chest, in his chest. But he didn't tell anybody that they, you know, wanted to get married. So they got married. And they had three children, two, three boys, four children, well, two, three, four. Um, three boys and one girl, okay? And so... Do you know their names? The names was, uh, the name was uh, called, well, my dad was Tampen, my uncle George was Gligori, my uncle Milos was Milos, and my teta was Teta Luba. Okay. Then, he, when he lost his wife, when my grandfather lost his wife in childbirth, these uh, children needed a mother. They were old enough, they needed a mother to take care of them. 
So he didn't know what to do, which way to turn. So he told my dad, he said, you are the oldest one. And I, he said, I think you should see to it that you get married early, find somebody. So he did. He and my mother had met in the fields again, just like he did with his wife. She was from Vishni too? From Vishni. Everything happened in Vishni. She was from Vishni too. And uh, they fell in love and they got married. And, uh, well, they had the children. Uh, my brother, my dad was 18 years old, my mother was 17 years old when they got married. Okay, then the first year, she had a baby at 18. That was my brother, Spiro. And, uh, and, uh, Spiro. And then five years, uh, uh, he came to America. He tried to... Somehow he came to America and stayed five years. And he wanted to go back one time and see the family. So he came back to the family and mother was glad to have him and everything. And so there was a war going on or something. He had to serve, if he'd have stayed, he would have to serve in the army. And so he told my mother, he only stayed six weeks. And he said, I've got to get away from here. She says, why? He says, because I have to go and serve as a soldier. I don't like to do that. He said, I know what in America is like. He said, I'm going to go back. And she says, how are you going to go back? He said, I'll find a way. I'll find a way. So uh, one morning after six weeks there, one morning they uh, said goodbye to each other. And my brother was five years old. He was there with them. And my father took the road to go where he was supposed to go. And my brother said, Daddy, Daddy, that's not the road. This is the road. Well, anyway, my dad took the right road, went to Salonika, then to France, and stayed with the, here and there people that he could find. And he wanted to come to America. And uh, this was probably in France or Probably, yeah. And so he didn't have a passport to come back. And so they said, no, you have to have a, a passport. So he got this passport, bought it from this Armenian man. His name was Albok Simeon. But before that, he went to Bulgaria. That's where my uncle was. My uncle Milos was in Bulgaria. He was connected with the school. He was a superintendent or principal or whatever, and he saw him and he told him what he was going to do. So he came to America. But in the meantime, I don't know why, they put him in jail in uh, Bulgaria. And he said he couldn't sit down or anything because there was water on the floor. They punished the people, the prisoners. Well, he got out of there. And then since he had this passport, he came to the boat and got on there and came to America. And uh, he had to go to some place where he knew people. There were relatives in Fort Wayne. So he came to Fort Wayne and started working at the roundhouse, what they call it. Oh, he made money there. He was, oh, he was crazy to make money. And, and uh, so he made enough money. And then he started looking because he was an apprentice in Castoria when he was a young man, he wanted to make shoes and repair shoes. And, uh, the repair shoes. Oh, and then from Fort Wayne, he said, well, I'm going to take off and see in some of these cities, maybe I'll buy a, a nice shoe shop someplace and I'll buy it because he made enough money. So, and little by little, he came to Busaras, Ohio, and he the, he knew the Bogues. He met them because every every Macedonian knew the other Macedonians. And uh, so and where were where were they from? The folk, where were the folks from? They were from uh, Barbini. How far away was that from Vishen? Well, <laughs> it was not very far. There's a mountain between the two, so we were on the west side of the mountain. They were on the east side of the mountain. Anyway, they, you know, one Macedonian knows the other is wonderful. And uh, so then he said, I'm looking for, for a business. 
Well, they said there's nothing here. So he went to Marion. In Marion, there were two cousins, and they had a, a like, a, like a ice cream and sodas and things like that, like they do now, like the ones we were the other night. And so he found them, and he stayed there, found a room, stayed with them, because they were related. And so then he went around and looked at Marion, and so he said, he thought, well, I'm going to see here what the tip of There was a sign on the shop, on the window, it said, for sale. So Dad went in there, it was just right. Dad went in there and he said to the man, he said, I'm looking for business. You're going to sell it. He said, how much do you want? And the man said, well, I want $2,000. And Dad said, that's too much money. I don't have that much money. And the man said, I'm sorry, but this is it. Dad said, can't you make it? One thousand five hundred? No. He said, no, I can't make it. So he said, you come back tomorrow. We'll talk again. So my dad went to Marion, went back to this man who had the shop. And, and they had told again about the price. But the man would not come down. So he told my dad, he said, nothing doing but $2,000. If you want it, okay, if not, that's it. So my dad said, okay, I'll buy it. So he bought the shop and stayed there and all the years that Bob had two people working for him, a man by the name of Mr. Young, and he told my dad one time, he says, Tommy, they called him Tom, Tom Papa. And uh, so he said, Tommy, I have made a barrel of money for you. And then he had another boy after school, uh, his name was Bill Guthrie. And Bill Guthrie had a sister who was a school teacher. House like that you lived in in Oh, Vision. oh, the house in Vision, it was not a house. It was just a little two rooms. We had a room for downstairs and then steps upstairs and our kitchen was upstairs because my grandfather's house was burned. It was burned to the ground. They had a beautiful house with an upstairs with wrought iron and everything. And one time that wrought iron reminds me, one time he was standing on the wrought iron and after my grandmother passed away, he was so upset and so um, world. He wanted. He stood there and stood there and stood there. He wanted to jump. So there was a man coming down the street. So he waited and this man went upstairs and started talking to him and he, you know, it was okay that he didn't want to do that anymore. But instead of that, he started drinking because he did not, he couldn't stand it. But mother was 